Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this here is episode three of my Duramax Camaro swap, 2014 Camaro, put an LML Duramax in it. The last episode, we got the engine, transmission, and drivetrain all mounted into the car. In this episode, we're gonna work on the intake system for the car, so that'll include all the boost tubes going from the turbo to the intercooler, and then back to the intake, and then also for the Y bridge of the intake itself. So stick around, let's get to work. So this factory LML Y bridge is actually way too tall to clear the hood of the car. So we're going to go ahead and cut off the big neck that sticks out the top of it. The reason why it's so tall is for it to connect to the EGR cooler, which we will not be running on the car, so it's not necessary to have it that tall. Once it's cut off here, we're going to be left with a big square hole in the Y bridge. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up, and we're going to fill it in with a piece of quarter inch aluminum plate. That'll just close it back up and it'll give us plenty of room to locate the two and a half inch aluminum pipe that we will then weld to it, which will act as the intake pipe to the engine. To make the plate, I'll start by just cutting out a rough square that's close in size out of the quarter inch aluminum sheet I have. Once I get it cut, I can mock it up onto the Y bridge, mark out the pieces that hang over and the parts that don't fit flush, We'll clean it up from there and trim it down so it fits perfectly and there's no gaps for the welding process later on. With it all cleaned up and fitting flush and sitting in there just how it should, we're going to take it back over to the car, bolt everything back into place, get the plate set on there, mark the position with a sharpie so we know where it's located on there, and then we can go ahead and start mocking up the two and a half inch aluminum pipe. So this piece of pipe I got is actually off of an intercooler, off of a tractor or something, I'm not even sure, I got it from the junkyard. And it's got some nice bends in it, which I thought I was going to maybe use and get it to curl around the alternator there. But after some mock-up and some checking, the best route was just to make a short stubby piece like this. And that way it'll fit right on the intake and then I can use a silicone boot to make the 90 degree uh, over towards the alternator. Because I'm going to be locating it so close to the side of the Y bridge, it's going to require a little step cut in it. So I'm just marking that right now and then we'll go ahead and notch that step out of there. That way we can get it as far over to the passenger side of the car so it'll clear that intake on the turbo itself for the intake horn. So you can see it here, this will be the final position of it. We've got lots of room for an intake horn to go into the intake of the turbo there and there's a lot of real estate there to locate our intake temp sensor somewhere in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and get it tacked up and then we're going to bring it back here We'll get some boots mocked up, getting up around the alternator there before I fully weld it and make it 100%. So it looks like going with the 90 degree boot off of the Y bridge into a metal pipe that'll curl down alongside the fuse box here and in front of the motor is gonna work. Right here it looks a little bit sloppy, it's sticking up too far and the pipe will have to be trimmed but that's not a problem, we can do that later. But at least it confirms that we can fully weld up that Y bridge and get the hole cut in it. For the welding, I'm using a spool gun on a Millermatic 252 with argon for gas. I find the spool gun works a little bit better when you're dealing with some of this dirty factory cast metal as opposed to the TIG welder. So in order to get the hole back going through the tube there, I'm just going to grab a hole saw with an extension and cut it through here. At least the aluminum is soft and the hole saw cuts through it pretty quick. And that's going to open it back up and then we'll go in there with some porting tools and clean it all up so it's nice and smooth afterwards. All right, and with that hole bored into the intake pipe, there's one more hole we need to make in this wire bridge before we can finish it up and get it installed back on the car. And that is drilling and tapping the hole for the intake manifold temperature sensor. You wanna make sure that you get this hole very straight and the tap also very straight as well. The sensor itself relies on a crush washer to seal. So once you get it in there, you can spin the sensor into the hole, give it a little tighten up, make sure it looks straight and it's gonna seal good. Okay, with the wire bridge done, we can now start making the pipes going from the turbo to the intercooler and then from the intercooler back into that wire bridge we just did. So I started with the driver's side intercooler piping. Just because the washer fluid tank hangs down below the frame rail on the car and kind of interferes with the routing of it. If you're wondering why the pipes look old, it's because they are old pipes. I bought them from the junkyard. I think they're like, come from the egg dealerships around here, probably warranty stuff that was left over. 
It actually did give me two very tight U-bends, some 45s and some 30s. And it only cost me like 35, 40 bucks. So that was a pretty good deal. I'm just gonna go ahead and start cutting the small pieces and then I just use some masking tape to tape them together. And then I can get everything mock up, mocked up into place. And once I know it's gonna be good and fit properly, I'll just tack it in place with the MIG welder and then carry on from the inside. All right, so those couple of bends fit pretty good coming off the intercooler. This one here isn't quite in the right spot, so I'm just gonna give it a little mark where I need to trim it off. And then I have another pipe that has an angle in it. We're gonna take that pipe, weld it straight onto where we're cutting this one off, and it should be pretty darn close to coming up and be close to where the turbo boot comes off there. So here it is cut off, and then the other piece we're gonna mock it up here, see how close it is. So it fits pretty good as it is. It's gonna to need to be shortened up on the bottom a little bit, and I think it's gonna be shortened up on the top. But this will, once these two are joined together, it's gonna to get that pipe right up just about level with the top of the ECM there, about right here. And then all we gotta do is put one more bend on it and connect it to the turbo, or to the boot that's coming off the turbo. So this side's gonna be almost wrapped up, going pretty good. And with those two, two tubes tacked together, we can get it back in place underneath the car here, connect it back to the intercooler. And you can see I found another piece of my junkyard stash that looks like it's gonna have just about the exact right angle on it and almost be just about the right length. So I'll trim that thing up and get it into place and then get it welded together. And one other thing I wanted to note on this side of the engine is I wanted to keep that high voltage wiring in the orange loom there over the intake pipe, kind of like it was with the LML from factory. But you can see this piece of pipe fit really good. Everything's made it up nice and straight. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull it all off and get it all welded up. Now with the driver's side pipe almost completed, it didn't take long to realize that it actually can't be installed in the car the way it is. But no worries, all you gotta do is pull the radiator out. But I mean, how often do you have to pull your intercooler pipes to service them? Pretty much never. So no big deal. Um, I'm just gonna pull the radiator out of the way, get everything put into place there, and finish our mock-up and get this pipe done. So it actually looks really good put into place here. Just gotta add a hose end onto the end of the pipe from one of my other pipes so that the hose can slide over it and clamp down. And that's done now. Then one last thing we're gonna do with this pipe is install a pedestal for the map sensor. I'll come back and finish that one later, but we better mark it now before we pull the pipe off. For the intercooler mount, I'm using three quarter by eighth inch mild steel angle iron. And then I'm using half inch round bar and uh, mild steel as well. I started by cutting a piece and drilling and tapping threads into two holes in it so it can be bolted to the front of the subframe. Then I cut another piece and drilled two holes in it so it could be bolted to the bottom of the intercooler. Then I'm taking two short pieces of the round bar to connect them to make up the bottom intercooler mount. Once I get everything in place in the car, I'll tack it all together and then I'll pull it off, finish weld it and paint it later on. The top part of the intercooler mount is going to be kind of along the same lines, just a piece of angle iron running across with two holes drilled in it to mount to the intercooler. And then I'll do two tabs that mount to these factory holes here on each side of the rad support. So I ended up mounting the intercooler at a little bit of an angle, and that's to clear the power steering cooler lines that come off the front of the condenser there and also to leave a little bit of room for the transmission coolers. There's dual transmission coolers going in this car that'll fit in between the top part of the radiator there, or the top part of the intercooler there and the radiator itself. Well, with the intercooler firmly mounted, now we can make the piping for the other side of the engine, the passenger side, that comes off of the Y bridge. We'll start by getting the nine degree boot on there. And then from there, I found a nice piece of my junkyard piping that fits just about perfect and kind of puts that pipe in line with the fuse box so it has a bit of symmetry to it and looks nice. From there the pipe is going to drop straight down in front of the engine and then we're going to join it up underneath to the intercooler basically the same as the other side 
with a couple of 90 degree bends to make a U-bend. All right, with the black piece of pipe trimmed up, you can see how well it fits. So it basically just drops straight down in front of the belt tensioner there. And if, like I said, it's gonna join up basically the mirror to the other side with a couple of U-bends here. And here you can see the top half all mocked up, ready to connect it underneath. So these are one of those U-bends I got from the junkyard. After eyeing it up a little bit, just go ahead and made some cuts and start working towards that piece of pipe that's already hanging down from the top. I then decided to pull off that top pipe and weld about a 30 degree angle onto it to get it that much closer. You can see it just sticking out there below the frame rail. The passenger side ended up being a little bit tougher to do because the intercooler is offset in order to make it easier to clear the washer fluid tank on the driver's side. So these bends right around here just needed to be that much tighter so they wouldn't come out and interfere with say the wheel uh, travel or anything like that from turning the wheels. But after mocking it up with a bunch of different small 90s and trimming them and shaving them down, getting them to fit, I went ahead and tapped it all together. And that pretty much is gonna wrap it up for the passenger side pipe. I also ended up trimming the subframe right here on both sides just to gain a little bit more clearance for the intercooler pipes. With the welding all finished up, I was able to focus on getting that map sensor mount done. As you can see here, I'm using an old flange again for my junkyard pipes, because I love junkyard pipes. Uh, cut a piece of the half inch flange off in a little rectangle and then I went ahead and just welded it onto the intercooler pipe in the position that I marked earlier. Then I'm going to go ahead and drill two holes in it. One of them will be threaded for a bolt and the other one will go right through and needs to go inside of that pipe so it can read boost sensor or boost pressure for the engine. I just used the map sensor itself to kind of draw a center line of where it needs to be located. You gotta remember here we're gonna be drilling two holes and this first hole that we're gonna drill needs to go straight through into the pipe for what can read boost pressure. But the second hole you're gonna have to make sure you don't drill it all the way through, that's for the bolt hole. And there's no point in drilling that through, you're just gonna give yourself a boost leak later on. So it's the hole center punched. I started with the pilot bit to get all the way through, then moved up to the correct size. Uh, once the correct size was drilled, I went at it afterwards with an even bigger drill bit just to kind of chamfer the hole and smooth it out. And then I was able to test fit the sensor and get it pressed into place and actually use it as a guide to mark the hole for the uh, threads to be put into. And with the spot marked, I just pulled the map sensor back out of the way. Finished drilling in a little bit. Now make sure again, don't go all the way through. There's no point in creating a boost leak where there doesn't need to be one. Then I just ran the tap up and down it, and I was able to put the sensor in, thread in the bolt, and it was done. And the last thing I did to the intercooler pipes to finish them off was grind all the welds smooth with the flap wheel. After I was done with the flap wheel and got them fairly smooth, I used an orbital sander to get everything uniform and prep it for paint. The paint I used was Duplicolor Eye Temperature Paint, gloss black, a few coats of the black, and then I hit them with a few coats of the clear coat, just to give them that real nice deep shine. And one of the last steps will be to install that manifold air pressure sensor. Just presses right on there, throw the bolt in, and you can see it just turned out very nice exactly how I wanted it. Alright, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, with the boost tubes all done, I'm back on the car, it's actually looking pretty good. Next episode we're going to cover transmission coolers, some fuel lines, a bunch of little things like that. Um, we're just both caught up to where the car is currently. You can see most of the electronics and stuff like that are done. So tomorrow, or the next episode is going to be more of just to kind of catch up on all the little things that aren't finished yet, go over that stuff and maybe touch a little bit on the EFI live tuning that I had to do and 
And also I had to order an MDI interface so that I can resync the immobilizer so the car will start. It's very close to starting where it's at right now. The first start video is going to be coming real soon. And then a little bit of tuning. I'm going to make this thing whistle like crazy. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated on this thing. And if you like what you see, well, hit the like button. See you next time.